problem four. This question involves reasoning about an arrays of integers. You will write two static methods, both of which are in a class named array tester. So I'm going to have array tester and I'm going to have static methods, one called get column and one called has all values. I'm, I'm going to write this one and I'm not going to write this one. And then over here, I've got contains duplicates. And then I want to know, is it a Latin? And so I'm going to have some square that I'm going to have to check in part B. Uh, first thing I want to do is write a static method called get column, which produces a one dimensional array containing the elements of a single column of a two dimensional array. In other words, if I give it a one, I want everything that's in column one, but I want to make it an array. So I want to get one, four, seven, five out of it. And so this is our non-traditional traversal of a matrix. Instead of going row by row, incrementing the rows, then incrementing the columns, I actually want to stay in the same column and just increment the row going down in order. So um, skip the page. So I need to write this method here. So let's talk about what that method would look like. So I've got public static, and this is going to return an array of int, which I'm going to call get column. And I'm going to pass it a two dimensional array called array 2D. And then I'm also going to pass it which column number I want. So the first thing I need to do is because I'm returning an integer array, I actually need to create an integer array. So I'm going to say int array call is going to be a new integer array. And the size is actually going to be determined by how many rows this array had. So I'm going to need to look at array 2D dot size. So the size is going to tell me how many rows this is. This is how many elements this column is going to have. And then I need to go through this array and take those elements out. So for int r gets 0, r is going to be less than array 2D dot size, r plus plus. So this is keeping track of the row. This row is going to be the first element in column, row 0. The next row, row 1, is going to be the next element in column. So in here, I'm going to say that column sub r is going to get whatever's in array 2D in row r and column C. Notice that column C never changes. It's always the same. Column C in our example is always 1. So I want what's in position 0, 1. Then I want what's in 1, 1 then I want what's in 2, 1, then I want what's in 3, 1. So that's always going to be the same. I've iterated through my loop, and then I'm going to return that one dimensional array column. So that's part A. It's pretty simple. It's a non-traditional traversal like we've done several times in this class. The next thing that we're going to be looking at is the is Latin, which is going to check to see if we've got a two-dimensional square array that is a Latin square, and otherwise we're going to get false. So in other words, I need to make sure that this first row has no duplicate variable, no duplicate values. If there's any duplications, that's bad. And then I need to make sure everything in the first row shows in every other row. So this one, two, three, I've got a one and a two and a three. It shows up in that row. And then I've got a one and a two and a three, and it shows up in that row. And then everything in this row also has to show up in this column. So I have to have a one and a two and a three. I have to have a 1 and a 2 and a 3. I have to have a 1 and a 2 and a 3. So I'm going to have to go through and make sure that everything in the first row appears in every row, and everything in the first row also appears in every column. If any of these mess up, if one thing is bad, then I'm false. So I can just return false at that point, just kind of wash my hands, make the program stop. Now, what's nice is that I have some tools at my disposal. I have a function called has all values, 
And what that's going to do is make sure that the array that I'm looking at has all values. I can assume that it's working. Similarly, I have contains duplicates, which allows me to make sure that there are no duplicates in there. And then I've got get column, which we wrote, which actually gets everything in there. But even if I made a mistake in part A, I get to assume it works here, which is really, really nice. So what I'm going to do is I need to first keep track of my first row. And that's going to be equal to square sub zero. And this first row is the one I'm going to be comparing with everything else, but I need to make sure that there are no duplicates in it. Because if there's any duplicates in it, it can't be a Latin square. So if uh, contains duplicates, first row, if that's true, then I want to return false. There's no reason to check anything else because I know that I've got a false at this point. If I make it past this line, I know that my first row is good, and so now I can compare it to every other row. So I'm going to create a variable called size, and this is going to be equal to square dot size. Now the thing is, I know that this is a square matrix, so however many rows I have is exactly the same as the number of columns, and that means size is actually going to be the boundary for my loop control variable. It's going to be the last thing that I check. And now I need to check each row. So for int i or r, let's use r, r gets 1. r is less than size r plus plus. I know you're saying, why aren't we starting at zero? We usually start our rows at zero. But keep in mind, my first row is row zero, and I've already taken care of it. So I don't need to start with row zero. I want to start with row one and make sure row one and every other row that follows it is good. So if, and I'm going to check to see first, does it contain any duplicates? Because if it contains any duplicates, I'm going to kick it out. So if contains duplicates, and I'm looking at square sub r, or, because I can not contain duplicates, then now I'm going to actually check, do I have all the values? So I'm going to check not has all values because I want to find out if it's a bad row. I want to see if it doesn't have all the values that first row has. So I'm going to compare first row with square sub r. And if either of these are true, then I want to return false. And that's going to get me through this loop. So once I've completed this loop, I know that every row is good. So now I need to check the columns. So now I'm going to say for int c is 0, c is less than size, c++. So now I'm going to go through every column of square, but I actually need to check column 0 because I haven't checked it before. I started at 1 up here because I had checked the first row. And I'm going to go through each one of these and I'm going to get that column. So I'm going to say int array call is going to be equal to my method get column that I assume works. So I'm going to say get column for whatever C happens to be. And then I'm going to test, and I'm going to test exactly the same way as I did here. But instead of checking my row, I now want to check call. So if contains duplicates, call, or not has all values, 
and I'm checking my first row with call. And if I make it into this if statement, then that's bad and I want to return false. Now, if I make it out of this loop, that means I've checked all the rows here and I've checked all the columns here. So everything's good and I'm going to return true. So this was kind of an ugly end to our free response. But again, we get to assume that all of these pieces work nice and we just have to make these pieces work in the right order.